This is another video about how I fly sling. It's about the basics of sling load operations with helicopters and will contain the basic techniques and principles that I use when flying. It is meant as a tutorial, but that is not to say that other techniques don't work just as well. This video is a direct sequel to my previous video, which I will leave a link of in the description, and will use some of the terms defined in that video. This video will contain the approach and the delivery of a load. The best way in my opinion to find a good approach is to set up some parameters to aim for. The altimeter, vertical speed indicator and airspeed indicator is something that you always have with you and is a great help before you start to get a feel for what an approach should look like. Let's look at an example. Before the mission starts during your recon, hover above the target at about the height of your long line, so about 15 to 20 meters. Now note what your altimeter is reading. This is the altitude you will have to get down to when delivering your load. For this example, let's say your altimeter is rating 700 feet. When the mission starts and you are en route with your load, and you feel like you want to start the approach and delivery phase, you can look at your altimeter and gauge how high you are. In this example, let's say you read the altimeter and it says 1200 feet. So you need to descend 500 feet to be at the 700 feet we were hovering at over the target before we started. Now all that is pretty obvious, but this is to give us parameters to aim for. For example, if we feel like this particular approach was too high, we can start descending sooner or don't climb as high as 1200 in the first place. To add another parameter, you can start your approaches at the same point over the ground on each delivery, and adjust that point to increase or decrease the distance of the approach in the same way we use our altimeter readings to adjust altitude of the approach. On this approach, I check my altimeter about here, and continue my approach and descent towards my target. I might be a little high here, so I'm going to adjust that down maybe 50 feet or so for the next delivery. In this example, my point to start the final approach and delivery is the bear tree just to the right of the load now. So from here on in, I slow it down and keep it moving steadily towards the target. The guy on the ground receiving the load is showing me where he wants it, and that is my target. Right now, I'm focusing on getting my sight picture aligned, and I'm a little bit off to the left. On the approach, it is easiest to fly in with a little bit of sight slip so that you have the right side of the helicopter pointing towards your target. This is so that you will be able to see the target for as much of the approach as possible. The approach with the sling load is much the same as a normal approach without any load, just usually a lot more power restricted. As with flying without a sling load, the most difficult thing to do in a helicopter is to hover. Hovering while looking down is even harder. So, on the approach, we want to keep the helicopter moving forward at a steady glide towards the target until the load reaches its destination. Keeping it moving will make everything easier for everyone involved and most of all for you, the pilot. Delivering a load and delivering an empty hook is very similar. You want to keep the hook in the reference point on the glass of the sling window and then put the reference point on the glass of the sling window over the target on the ground. One thing to remember is to bring in plenty of power early in the delivery phase and have a slow rate of descent. That way you have the option and power available to stop the load more comfortably in a hover or perform a go around if you have to. It is ideal if you can slowly decelerate in one smooth motion from the en route phase until the sight picture lines up over your target. Here is another example of a delivery of a heavy container. The procedure remains exactly the same as the previous example, but here I don't bring in enough power early when blading off the airspeed. I look inside to check my power and I wrongly assume that I have enough power to give a controlled delivery. As I keep blading off my airspeed I lose a lot of energy and a lift capability and I sink through the last 1.5 meters or so. At this stage it would have been too late to bring in power. That is why you need to do it early before you start to fall through. In this shot, we are flying concrete for the foundations of a power line tower. In this first delivery, I overshoot a little bit. 
The approach starts fine, except I'm carrying a little bit too much speed and the slowing down is done too abruptly towards the end causing a pendulum. The guy on the ground has to move away, and on top of that we now have to spend time stabilizing the load which is both straining and time consuming. Now, don't get me wrong, overshoots and undershoots will definitely happen, but working on getting that smooth deceleration on the delivery is very important. It is more safe in the terms of power management, and increases the predictability of the movements of the load for the people on the ground receiving the load. It is also important in the process of building your own efficiency and speed. It will also save you a lot of next train in the beginning, and you'll have to work less on the flight controls making the job easier for you. So back to this particular delivery. Overall the delivery was acceptable, but there are things I would like to improve upon. On my way back to the concrete truck here, I think about what I would like to have done differently. So I break it down. The speed was a little too high and the slowdown was a little too abrupt towards the end. Also the angle was a little bit off because I flew over the guy on the right side of the foundation. My height when starting the delivery was fine and the control inputs were nice and smooth. So basically I need to work on approach speed and also adjust my approach a little bit so that I come in straight over the foundations on the next approach. One thing to point out is that flying concrete is not the type of mission you will fly when you start out slinging. But it is very helpful to show because the load is the same every time and the delivery point is the same every time. It's easy to demonstrate changes on two consecutive deliveries where adjustments were applied to the second delivery. Now let's see the second try. It might be a little slow if we're aiming for optimal, but it's still better than the first and a lot less work for me and the guys on the ground. Here we can see that the second attempt takes less time to reach the target. It has fewer control inputs making it smoother and easier for the ground crew to receive. Overall the second delivery is the quickest. In conclusion, set up parameters for the approach to aim for and adjust them throughout the mission. Between loads, think critically of how the last delivery went and how you could improve for the next one. Keep the helicopter moving smoothly and avoid hovering until the load reaches the target.